So attribute pieces for playing with sets. An attribute is a characteristics and, and the kind of characteristics we have to play with here, we have color and there's four different colors. We have shape and there are four different shapes here. And then we have size. And some attribute sets that you'll find in classrooms will have three or four or five colors. They'll have three, four, five, six shapes. And for sizes, they'll have two or three sizes. And sometimes they'll even throw in thickness. There'll be thin ones and there'll be thick ones. And there's a whole bunch of varieties these are out there in the world for kids to play with. So I have two sizes here. And anytime you have a set of choices like this to build a shape, right? So of the four colors, I could pick red. Of the shapes, I could pick square. And of the size, I could pick small. Um, so then I've just identified the small red square here. Whenever you have choices like that, the total of number of possibilities is always going to be the product of these numbers. And this is called the counting principle. And so altogether, I should find there's four times four, which is 16 times two, there should be 32 shapes in the grid there. Another way I can double check that is I have a grid here that is four across and eight tall, four times eight is 32. So there's 32 pieces in my universal set here. So we're gonna play around with this, this idea of set and attribute in a couple of different ways. One way is to just play a sequence game with this, where we make a sequence of shapes changing one attribute at a time and see how long we can do that for. And then we'll try it again doing two at a time. The other thing we'll do is we're just going to play around with the idea of two sets and three sets. And, and once we name those sets, how do the pieces relate to each other? Now, you have a couple of options on how you can make this happen. If you have a set of attribute pieces that are like this, and you can, you can get a set of 32 like this to play with for real, like you have access to a school district that has these toys, see if you can borrow a set to play with. That's fun. Alternatives are, you could take this right here, open the image in a new tab, and then you could print this if you have access to a color printer. If it's a black and white printer, it's not as useful. Um, so often what I do in, a, in a, a classroom is if I don't have enough to go around or people want to take some home, I'll just print these out and then we'll just cut them out. And so we can have them to play with on, on paper. Uh, so we'll have these actual things we can mess around with. Third option is I have an online version of it embedded here in the page, which we can pop out into a new tab, and then you can play with that here. So for example, in terms of making a sequence, I can just lay them out here. Like I start off with the small circle and I wanna change one of its attributes, right? It has three attributes right now. It is small, it is blue, it is a circle. So I have to change one of those three things. So maybe I'll change its size. Okay, so now I have a large blue circle. So that would be changing one attribute. So now I have the large blue circle. It is large, it is blue, it is a circle. I need to change one of those attributes. Which one do I wanna change? Well, I could change maybe its color. So I could change from blue to yellow. And these two shapes have two attributes in common, right? They are large circles, I just changed the color. So that's part one of this activity, or part A, I should say. So we wanna make a pattern with attribute pieces by changing only one attribute at a time. So we pick one to start with, and you could write this down on paper by doing an abbreviation. So if I were gonna do an abbreviation for that one, let's put it on paper. I started off by selecting the small blue circle. And then I'm gonna change one of these attributes and I choose to change small to large. So then I end up with the large blue circle. And then for my next one, I have to change one of these attributes. I chose to change color from blue to yellow. So that can be the large yellow circle. So you have a couple of ways you can note what you're doing by drawing it, by using abbreviations, or by using the app or the real things. So here I was using, let's see, where'd you go? Here, I was using that app. 
to make that happen. And so what I wanna see is, can I keep going and use up all of these or am I gonna get stuck and not finish? Kind of curious. So you're gonna try that, see what happens. Do you get stuck? Do you use them all? And then we'll look at the group results later. Um, and again, you also have to answer the question, how long of a sequence can you make? So I wanna know what your sequence was. So somehow you have to show that to me, whether, you, I, whether I actually see through the app or maybe you have a set of these printed out or you have a real set of them. You'll take a picture of them sitting on your desk maybe. Or perhaps you write it out like I was doing over here, which I think is not nearly as exciting as playing with them. So you would have a list of abbreviations going on and on and on until you got stuck or you used them all. And you'll say, hey, I used all 32 or man, I made it through 20 and then I got stuck. I ran out somehow. You're just gonna let me know what happened. And give me a little evidence. Oops, wrong way, back here. You're gonna do that again. And this one I found a little harder. This one hurt my brain a little more. You're gonna make a pattern again with the attribute pieces, but you're gonna change two attributes at a time. So not just one, but two. So if I were to go up here and try that, clear the whole thing. So suppose I start, maybe I'll start over here with that one. All right, so that has the attributes large, blue, and hexagon. I have to change two of those. So maybe I'll hold on to large. So that means I have to change the color and the shape. So change the color and the shape. So maybe I'm gonna grab this one. So I held on to large, but I changed color and shape. All right, so now I have the large yellow triangle. I have to pick two attributes to change. So maybe I'm gonna hang on to yellow so that means I have to change shape and size. Shape and size. So maybe I'm gonna go, let's say I'm gonna hold on to yellow, shape and size. So I have to choose a different shape and make it smaller. So there's me choosing that. And then I'm just gonna keep doing that, changing two attributes at a time. Sometimes the abbreviation with the picture can help. So that's something for you to play with. And you just wanna see how long can you keep doing this? Do you get to use all the pieces doing that or are you gonna get stuck? Does it depend on your choices along the way? We'll see. All right, so kind of linking back to the patterns we were doing before, we're gonna play around with patterns again uh, with these shapes. Then the other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pick two attributes. And again, what are the attributes I have to choose from? I have to choose from size, large or small. I have to choose from color, red, yellow, green, and blue. And I have to choose from shape, triangle, square, hexagon, and circle. Uh, I'm gonna make two sets based on some attributes. And this is a great way for me to demonstrate that. There is a button called two Venn here, which throws up two Venn diagrams. Notice at the top of each, it says click. And so as you click through the click, it picks a different attribute to be that set. So I could have this, this circle on the left that could be the blue set, or it could be the yellow set, or the red one, or the green one. Now, uh, I would recommend not doing thin and thick, because then that means we have twice 64 different pieces to look at here. Um, there is a thickness button here. And if I do put a thick shape in when thick is selected, if I switch back, this one is not thick. So notice the one on the right does not have a shadow. The one on the left does. So this is a thick shape and that is a thin shape over there. I recommend not using thick. I think 34 choices is more than enough. Using thickness to get 64 choices I think is not necessary. But if you wanna challenge yourself, go for it. Um, so my version of this, I'm not gonna do thin and thick. Uh, but then I just have a bunch of options. So I have the colors to choose from in there. I'm gonna ignore thin and thick. And then we are gonna do large and small. They're on the screen. We're gonna use those. And then I have circle, square, triangle, rectangle, hexagon, and then blank. Now this blank right here is kind of make up your own set. Okay, so I could say, all right, my set's gonna be things with straight sides. That could be the name of my set. So what would go in the set things with, great, with straight sides? Well, I could be a square or a triangle or a hexagon, but not a circle, right? 
Um, I could say my set here is primary colors. Painting, let's see, primary colors are what? Red, what are primary colors anyway? They are blue, red, and yellow, is that right? In computer, they're, computer screens, they're different. I have to look that one up. But anyway, you can make the set called anything you want, as long as you can, based on that title, decide what is in that set and what is not. So give this set a name, whether you make up the name yourself or you choose one of the predefined names here. Okay, so maybe I'm gonna say that's the large set and then decide what this set's gonna be. Maybe that's gonna be my circle set. And then what I wanna know is what lives in the intersection what lives over here, what things are large and not circles, what things are circles but not large, and what lives out here in the universe. And there's many ways you can go about that. You can go about actually dragging pieces in here to see what happens, right? So for example, here I would have to have large circles. So these four things go there. The rest of the circles go over here. Oops, I missed. The rest of the large ones go over there, and then everything that's that's uh, not large or circle would go outside of that. So I'm going to keep putting them out there. And let's see what I want to know about that. That's it. Just put put them in the right location. Uh, if you do this with the uh, my attribute app here, once you're done, you could take a screenshot of it. So every computer does screenshots a little bit different. I just go search for screenshot, pops up my screenshot tool. And then once I'm done, I'm not quite done, I would then take a screenshot of my universe to show, hey, I got it all right there. And my computer's a little slow today. Give it a name, put it somewhere safe. And actually, I should demonstrate this. Let me do this. Let's take a screenshot. Let's make believe I'm done. And I'm going to put it somewhere special. Documents. No, someplace special. Documents. MFS 211. And let's put it in a folder. Activity two one. Name it. This would be part three. So if you do have screenshots or images from your phone, the way you would get them to me is once you've done all of this work on screens or on a paper, then you can, st the start really is submit. Uh, so, so don't hit the start till you've actually done it. And then in here, you're going to answer those questions. So for example, I'm going to write up what I did for question one. So my pattern with one attribute change and then blah, blah, blah. I'm going to talk about it. Maybe I'm going to have a picture to go with it. And then I'm gonna do my number two. Two changes at a time, blah, blah, blah. And then this one right here, my two sets were, let's see, I had large and circle. And then I can put the image after. I'm gonna start my three set one for now. My three sets were blah, 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 whatever they were. Um, and then the way I recommend putting images in is remember the shift enter trick I went over before. So if at the end of line three here, I'm ready to put an image, shift enter gives me a new line. And then I can go over here to images and I can upload from my computer that image. And alt text is optional. That's for screen readers, for people who are visually impaired. And I'm ready to put it in there. Embed, submit. 
and then Canvas will stick that in there for you, for you. If it comes in too big, like that's kind of big right there, I can click on it and resize it. That's a little better, so that's kind of doable. And so if you had images to share with number one here, just do a little shift enter and then go grab your image. So the image has to live on your computer. So if you took a picture with your phone, you'd have to then get that image over to your computer. Some people like my wife has a iPhone and a Mac and her iPhone and Mac share images easy. Um, I don't. So I would have to, from my phone, I had to get it to my computer. I have to email it to myself. Then I go to my email and download it and then I can upload it here. And I have a video on the playlist showing how I do that. Every computer is a little bit different. Everybody has a slightly different phone. If you need help getting this stuff in there to look good, let me know. I'll gladly help you uh, get that stuff in there. Uh, and if you want to have this all on paper, just take pictures of your paper and get your, your pictures of your paper in here. Uh, and you can do that again by just inserting images that you took with your phone. But again, you got to get them over to your computer to do that. Um, something to note about this. Now, I, I hit start assignment, but I haven't finished it. So if I submit right here, I'm not done. The way Canvas works, unfortunately, is you once you hit submit, you can't edit what you submitted. You kind of got to do a whole new submission. So my recommendation is work through all of these questions on screen or on paper or both. Once you think you have good answers for all of them, then hit start and then get your stuff in here typed and images inserted in there. If you'd rather do this all in like a word processor like Word or Google Docs, that's cool too. You can just attach your file to this box. There's an attach button. Uh, where's the attach button? There used to be an attach button here. Am I lying? It's that one. Embed. Link. No. Am I making this up or am I confusing this with the discussion board? Ah, there it is, upload document. So it's this button right here, allows you to attach things like a Word doc. If it's a Google doc, you just get the share link and you just insert that as a link. So if you have any questions about how to get your work into this text entry area here, let me know, I'll be glad to help you do that. Um, and again, if I were to submit this right now, I've only partially answered one of the questions. I'm not really ready to submit yet. If you happen to accidentally submit it early and they're like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. I wasn't done. Just do a new attempt. I'll look at everything you submitted and, and eventually figure it out. And if, I'm, if, I'm, if I have a question, I'll just write to you and say, hey, did you really submit everything? But I can always do a new attempt and do it right or add whatever was missing. Okay, so, so these are kind of sort of similar to homework problems we've done playing around with sequences, playing around with two sets, playing around with three sets, but we have these, these toys physically or virtually to play with uh, to do so in, in organizing this information. And so now it's just up to you to get something done there.